So we go through the uh, introduction about the Buddha. But what the Buddha came is that we have, uh, he had already rid of the so-called Greek hatred and uh, delusion. And there's no, uh, no conflicting emotions about him. So he had rooted out the sense of pride, attachment or hostility. Pride, hostility, and uh, uh, the words that he speaks, the thoughts, and the deeds of a Buddha are motivated by generosity, loving kindness, and wisdom. And what he thinks, what he say, what he do, are all based on these. And this is the effect of, of the food of what happened is awakening. Now I briefly mentioned about this so-called Buddha nature. It is as if something that we all possess and actually is the potential. Everyone has the potential of becoming an awakened one, of becoming a Buddha. Or the Buddha nature also refers to something that is uh, what we call the emptiness. And uh, in order to talk about this, we need to go to introduce about the Dharma. One is the chapter one, which is the teaching of the Buddha, or the underlying law of reality. It's interesting enough is the uh, lowercase Dharma is the mental and physical phenomena or the teachings that constitute the Dharma, which is the capital Dharma. So the uh, lowercase Dharma referring to all the phenomena that we uh, perceive, not only the physical thing that we encounter in our environment, but also whatever that's in our, in our thinking. The voice, the sound that we hear, and then the, uh, the signal or the symbols that we perceive as well as the, you know, like the, the picture and things. Whatever we perceive through our senses, so eyes, our nose, our mouth, our ears, our body, whatever that we perceive, and it becomes the, the, the signal or the image or the, uh, the, the, uh, the sound or the smell, whatever. They all consider dumb. And also what we hold on to very dearly, like the way we think. Certain things should be like this, certain things should be like that. Or if you like this thing, you don't like this thing. All these sides. So in short, it's about the truth about, about things, the truth about the world. And it is the way things are and also the way to act. Interesting enough is that the Buddha regarded the, the Dharma that he had found as profound, profound, what? Hard to see, hard to understand, peaceful, sublime, beyond the sphere of near reasoning, and beyond the sphere of near understanding, as well as subtle. And it is only to be experienced by the wise. And the knowledge of Dharma is not something that is acquired simply by being told the necessary information or by reading the appropriate texts. This means that this um, such study may have a part uh, to play, but it can never be the whole story. Now talking about this knowledge of Dharma, it comes about a result of interplay between three kinds of understanding. One is the, the so-called prajna. And prajna is arising from listening, from reflection and spiritual practice. So you have first a listen. Listen also includes that, that, that so-called study. Reflection refers to you have to think, reasoning until we realize, and that's uh, the so-called uh, prajna. And that this is the, the, uh, the also in English is called wisdom. So the, uh, the full and complete understanding of the Dharma 
is attained through three stages. One is listening and reading the text, practice and realization. And the practice, you could see the results. In some way, it's, it's shortly you, 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 you see the result, but in another way, it could take lifetimes of practice. <laughs>